Item number, SCP-514, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. There is currently no permanent containment site for SCP-514. SCP-514 is currently being tracked by Mobile Task Force Lambda-4, aka Bird Watchers, who are under orders to observe SCP-514. In the event that SCP-514 strays near a densely populated area, or an area where its presence will be easily noticed, Mobile Task Force Lambda-4 is authorized to use the in order to manipulate SCP-514's migration patterns. Access to SCP-514 in the is restricted to Mobile Task Force Lambda-4. Level 4 personnel may also have access, but must have O5 level approval beforehand. Any experiments and weapons tests with SCP-514 must be performed exclusively at the Foundation Advanced Weapons Research Facility. In the event that SCP-514 risks public exposure or capture by rival groups, Mobile Task Force Lambda-4 is authorized to terminate the threat by any means necessary. It is highly recommended that such threats be terminated before they reach SCP-514's zone of influence though this is not strictly necessary. Description SCP-514 is a flock of Columba Livia Domestica, or homing pigeons. Visual analysis confirms that these pigeons are in fact the kind used in white dove release ceremonies. However, the type of ceremony they were used in, or the identity of who bred these doves, is currently unknown. What makes SCP-514 unusual is the weapon and aggression nullification zone of influence it seems to project around itself. This zone of influence projects itself in a roughly 500 meter radius around the flock, though this estimation varies depending on the flock's size. This zone of influence renders every known type of weapon inoperable, and often destroys affected weapons after prolonged exposure. For instance, firearms will immediately jam or misfire, explosives will be rendered inert, and melee weapons will decay into dust. Also, the items SCP-514's zone of influence destroys appear to be selective. For further details, see Experiment Log 514-A. In addition to its weapon nullification ability, SCP-514 can also somehow suppress violent emotions and intent in sentient beings within the zone of influence. Interviews with staff and civilians who had been exposed to the Zone of Influence said that they felt very calm and content, even when they felt stressed and angry just moments before. For further details, see Experiment Log 514-B. Currently, there appears to be no harmful or lasting effects to being exposed to SCP-514's Zone of Influence. Rigorous physical and psychological screening of individuals exposed to the Zone of Influence showed nothing out of the ordinary. SCP-514 was first discovered when numerous reports of weapons stockpiles were reported as having been destroyed in numerous African nations. While the initial reports were written off as poor maintenance on the part of the owners of the weapons, additional reports of sightings of a flock of homing pigeons, which are uncommon in Africa, garnered Foundation interest. An investigation team was sent to track SCP-514 where they encountered a team claiming to be affiliated with the MANA Charitable Foundation, who were also tracking it. The MCF members admitted they released SCP-514 in an effort to, quote, end all conflict in Africa, end quote, despite not having a reliable way to control its movements. Unfortunately, the MCF was apparently unaware that SCP-514's aggression suppression effects were only temporary once affected subjects were no longer within its zone of influence, and they would resume hostilities with improvised or primitive weaponry once SCP-514 left. In addition, SCP-514's random movements caused only certain regions to be disarmed, leaving them vulnerable to invasion by their unaffected neighbors. It took another three weeks before NTF Lambda-4 were able to bring the to control SCP-514's movements. The MCF members then challenged the Foundation team for possession of both SCP-514 and the Since both parties were still under SCP-514's effects, 
The conflict was resolved through a single round of rock, paper, scissors, with the Foundation being the victor. The MCF members then fled the area before they could be further questioned. The origin of SCP-514 and how it came into the possession of the MCF remains unknown. Experiment Log 514A Various tests were performed by continually using the to have SCP-514 circle around the Foundation Advanced Weapons Research Facility. Firearms Items used Glock 9mm handgun Colt 45 1911 handgun MP5 submachine gun Thompson submachine gun M16 assault rifle AK-47 assault rifle Saw M24 sniper rifle Data expunged. All weapons confirmed to be in working order. Result. All weapons, when tested, failed to fire. Later inspection showed that all weapons suffered from various mechanical failures that rendered the weapons useless. Ammunition exposed to the zone of influence also failed to fire when loaded into weapons not affected by the zone of influence. Chemical propellant was found to be rendered completely inert. Explosives Items used 1 standard hand grenade 28.35 grams 1 ounce of dynamite 28.35 grams 1 ounce of C4 high explosive 28.35 grams or 1 ounce of thermite 1 81mm high explosive mortar round 1 120mm tank shell Data expunged Result all explosives were immediately rendered inert when exposed to the zone of influence. In addition, any detonators or components that would aid in the detonation of the tested devices suffered mechanical and electronic failures. Melee weaponry 1 combat knife 1 steak knife 1 baseball bat 1 katana 1 poleaxe 1 spear Result All weapons with the exception of the steak knife and the baseball bat, were rendered useless through accelerated rate of decay. However, when the steak knife and baseball bat were used in a threatening manner, both items were immediately rendered useless through accelerated decay. Weapons of Mass Destruction 1 liter of sarin nerve gas 1 gram of weaponized anthrax 1 tactical nuclear warhead Result all weapons rendered completely inert. All samples, including the nuclear material, were completely degraded, and instruments recorded no radiation. In the case of the warhead, the electronic detonator was also rendered useless. Conclusion SCP-514's zone of influence appears to be able to render any conventional weapon inoperable. Also, the damage each weapon suffers is directly proportional to how long the weapon is exposed to the zone of influence. In under an hour, all weapons eventually degraded into dust. The zone of influence is also somehow selective, being able to discern items that are actively designed as weapons from items that are potentially dangerous, but not specifically designed to be weaponized. However, SCP-514 also appears to be able to discern when an item will be used for violent intent and said item will be directly affected by the zone of influence. It remains unclear whether SCP-514's ability to selectively target certain weaponry and discern hostile intent is a property inherent to its zone of influence, or if it is directly controlled on the part of SCP-514 itself through some form of group intelligence. Dr. Experiment Log 514B Live subjects were exposed to SCP-514 zone of influence for an extended period of time. The subjects were divided into two groups. Voluntary test subjects drawn randomly from the general population as the control group, and Class D personnel with a history of violent behavior as the test group. Tests showed that the test group's violent tendencies were completely suppressed and acted in a similar fashion to the control group. Suppression of the test group's violent tendencies occurs even after the subjects leave the zone of influence, though the duration is directly proportional to the time spent exposed to the zone of influence. Live testing against sentient SCPs proposed, pending O5 approval. Dr. Addendum 1. 
several high-ranking members in the Foundation's military branch, as well as various associated government agencies, have expressed interest in weaponizing SCP-514. There is great strategic and tactical value in an asset that can effectively neutralize an entire enemy army's arsenal in a short period of time. There are also requests to test SCP-514's zone of influence against several Keter-level SCPs. However, access to SCP-514, as well as the remains restricted. O5 Command is currently deliberating the issue. Addendum 2 All attempts to capture SCP-514 for containment and study have been met with failure. Every agent, doctor, and researcher sent to capture SCP-514 steadfastly refused to complete the mission. This is most likely a reaction to SCP-514's zone of influence. Attempts to remotely capture the flock through the use of drones or long-range devices have resulted in the destruction of all equipment involved. It is evident that SCP-514 interprets any attempts to capture it as a hostile act, triggering the nullification effects of its zone of influence in response. Again, it is still unclear whether that is a property inherent to SCP-514's zone of influence or is regulated through a group intelligence among the flock. Surveillance with Mobile Task Force Lambda-4 still in effect, but the use of the authorized. Addendum 3 As of date expunged, all members of Mobile Task Force Lambda-4 are required to be proficient in various non-violent, competitive activities, including but not limited to sports, board games, card games, video games, trivia, riddles, and rock-paper-scissors. Are you serious? The fate of one of our SCPs could be decided on the outcome of rock-paper-scissors. O5 I assure you, sir, you have nothing to fear. We are dead serious about these matters. Captain Mobile Task Force Lambda-4, Bird Watchers. Note, Captain, couldn't you have chosen a more dignified game as your primary conflict resolution method? Seeing two grown men in all-black tactical gear taking a children's card game so seriously is off-putting. 0511. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-513, A Cowbell, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.